this just might be the best mod that you can do for your standard Ender 3. This is the 32-bit SKR Mini E3 mainboard. I've been making a few videos about mainboard upgrades lately, including the SKR version 1.3, as well as Clipper, which uses a Raspberry Pi to take the heavy lifting off your standard mainboard. All of these options take time and effort, and this can be daunting for beginners. It's probably no surprise that so many have gone for the silent offerings from Creality. They're plug and play, but they're really not that cheap. Well, this little board here is more powerful, more expandable, and less expensive. Let's start by taking a look at the specs. This is the SKR Mini from Big Tree Tech. It's a tiny and affordable 32-bit mainboard, but it's not the version that we're interested in for this video. This is the SKR Mini E3 variant, with E3 standing for Ender 3. It's got the same 32-bit ARM processor, and it's got integrated TMC 2209 stepper motor drivers. Recently, when I covered the new TMC stepper motor drivers, that included the 2209s and the 5160s. They're expensive because they're new, but as you can see, they can handle a really high current, which means when we're running low current steppers, like on the end of three, they're gonna run cool. They run Stealth Chop 2, which means they're quiet as well as talky, and they're smart stepper motor drivers, which means we can have diagnostics as well as sensorless homing. The big thing for us is the form factor. With the exact same footprint, mounting holes, and connectors as the original Creality Ender 3, CR10, and Ender 5 board. There's also an E3 dip version, and that doesn't have the built-in 2209 stepper motor drivers. Instead, like the SKR version 1.3, it's got the empty stepper motor driver sockets, and the special jumpers so you can run drivers in UART or SPI mode very conveniently. There's some great resources for both of these boards. We have clearly labeled wiring diagrams, PCB diagrams with all of the pins named if we need to tweak the firmware, and GitHub pages with a lot of detail on the hardware, including a PDF manual, schematics of all of the electronics components, the USB driver for the board, a pre-prepared version of Marlin 2.0, as well as all of the instructions for the changes you need to make if you're doing it yourself. The cheapest place to buy it is from the BQ official store on AliExpress, where it's just under $30, the same link will buy you both E3 versions, just click the picture to select which one that you're after. The main boards arrive in rather a handsome box, and inside there always seems to be a gift rubber ducky. Apart from that, we have some heat sinks, we have a USB cable, as well as the actual main board, and inside this packet there's also some jumpers. Here we can see a standard Creality board version 113 versus the E3 Mini DIP and 2209 versions. It's easy to see that dimensionally they are identical, with the same mounting holes and all of the same plugs. The layout of the boards is also exactly the same, which makes it a really easy job to switch from one board to another. The 2209 drivers can be seen as these small dark chips. There are some additional improvements, including the fuse and some additional input outputs, such as a BL Touch and RGB LEDs. Here's the standard SKR mini board, it has the same amount of connectors, the layout is different, but most importantly, it doesn't have the special jumpers to make connecting UART and SPI mode drivers very convenient. We are definitely spoilt for choice, and this range of SKR main boards are fast becoming the go-to option for affordable upgrades. So on paper, this thing looks very promising, requiring no changes to the electronics housing and no firmware changes either. In this video, I'm going to focus on the E3 Mini with the built-in TMC 2209s. And that's because it's the most plug and play, so I guess it's time to install it. Our first job is exposing the mainboard, and if you've got a standard Ender 3, you need to remove the panel that covers it from the top. If you have an Ender 3 Pro, it's accessed by removing the panel from the bottom of the printer. If you're using my all-in-one universal remounted electronics case, simply undo two bolts, take off two caps, and you can slide the whole lot out the back for easy access. I've made two diagrams that are really gonna help you out, and I recommend printing them off for reference as you're doing this job. We're basically going to unplug all of the wires from one and plug them straight into the other. In making my guides, I've changed between main boards more times than I'd like to admit, so it only takes me a little under eight minutes. 
If you're a beginner, it might take you closer to 15 to 20 minutes. Everything goes into exactly the same place apart from I and G. The blue and yellow cable needs to go into I for the part cooling fan. If you plug it into G, it'll constantly be on as that receives 24 volts permanently. Before you put the case back on, don't forget to install the little heat sinks on top of the stepper motor drivers that come with the main board. The only other thing you might consider doing is installing the driver for the printer from GitHub, but I didn't even need to do this as Windows 10 recognized the device. I think most people would agree that this job is very manageable, and the good news is once you get to this stage, your installation is complete. It was time for the moment of truth. And with everything connected, I went to the LCD menu to verify that everything was working. The part cooling fan could be controlled as expected, the hot end and beds could both be heated, and manual movements of each axis worked too. But there was only one problem, and that's that auto home was not working. You can see here that it's not moving towards the end stops because it already thinks they're triggered. So I connected via terminal with Pronterface and sent an M119 to verify that the end stops were incorrectly triggered. I downloaded the latest version of Marlin 2.0, copied the base Ender 3 config files from Keith B, and then applied the half dozen firmware steps from the Big Tree Tech GitHub. After copying the firmware.bin file to the SD card and cycling the power, everything was fixed. Now my board has been in the mail for a long time, so I can only assume it was an earlier version of the firmware that wasn't quite sorted yet. The Big Tree Tech GitHub does have the correct end stop settings, so I think it's safe to expect that any board shipped from this point forward will have the correct firmware. If you're still worried about buying this and having to tweak with the firmware, never mind. In the description, I have a link to a free firmware binary file that you simply need to unzip, put on the SD card, and it will fix it completely. Now another limitation of the standard board is the lack of expandability. If you wanted to fit a BL Touch, to do it neatly you have to spend money on a pin 27 board. One of the advantages of the SKR Mini E3 is that that is much easier. So let's see what it takes to fit a BL Touch. Normally the standard board on an Ender 3 doesn't have any pins for a BL Touch, so we need a pin 27 board. It hijacks the LCD cable and gives us our extra pin at the expense of the buzzer. Not only is this messy, but it's an added cost to avoid cutting wires. The good news is, if we look at the pin diagram for the SKR Mini E3, we can see that we have a servo port, and that's where we're going to plug in the BL Touch. We also have a second port designated for the black and white probe wires from the BL Touch. But after reading on GitHub that it required more mucking around with the firmware, my recommendation is not to use this, but instead to reuse the standard Z and stop plug. Here's a diagram of exactly where the colors go. In this orientation, it goes yellow, brown, and then red from top to bottom. The Z end stop plug needs to have black on the top and white on the bottom. Please keep in mind that this might be different to the way your BL Touch cable is wired. So it might be necessary to use something pointy to pry up the lugs on the DuPont connectors and rearrange the wires to match the SKR Mini E3 board. This also might be necessary for your black and white probe wire that plugs into the Z end stop. In terms of firmware changes, it's pretty much the same as any of my other BL Touch guides. Except for in configuration.h, we need to search for end stop interrupts feature, uncommented to make it defined. The 32-bit processor of this board should be able to handle that extra load. I always set up my probing grid symmetrically because I feel it gives me better results. Too often I see people complain that the BL Touch only works properly on one side of the printer but not the other. Fortunately with my setup, this is an issue I've never run into. As we have a new mainboard and there's nothing stored in the EEPROM, don't forget to go to the LCD menu and set your Z offset. Also don't forget to go to the menu as well and store that to the EEPROM so it's persistent the next time you power on the printer. For my first print, I like to start with a really simple shape like this X that fills up the bed and lets me dial in that first layer. Once I've done this and saved the value, I know that my future prints will be reliable and repeatable. Well, I hope you agree that that was quite straightforward and a couple of test prints verified that everything was working. As you can see with the TMC 2209s, there's no surface artifacts and the quality is quite good considering this print was done at 100 millimeters per second. At the beginning of this video, I made a pretty big claim that this might be the best mod you can do to an Ender 3, especially if it's standard. So let me justify my case. Firstly, the convenience of not needing a bootloader. Simply put the firmware file on the SD card and reboot. 
This also means you don't need to spend money on a Uno or firmware flasher. This board will come with Marlin 2.0 and that means all of the safety features such as thermal runaway protection are automatically enabled. The 32-bit processor is a lot more powerful than standard. This gives you freedom to use more features in Marlin or simply print at higher speeds reliably. We've seen that a BL Touch is a lot easier to fit, but there's also touch screens, LEDs and other accessories from BQ that are compatible with this board without soldering. The TMC2209 stepper motor drivers won't suffer from surface artifacts, saving you money on a set of TL smoothers. The 2209s will also make your printer a lot quieter. Here's a comparison. Finally, and maybe best of all, this board is easy to fit and very affordable. You get all of this for under US $30. There it is, an affordable and easy upgrade that ticks a lot of boxes. And if you still need more convincing, you'll find down in the description links to various firmware files that I've set up, including the source if you want to tinker, or if you don't, already compiled firmware files that you simply whack on the SD card and restart the printer to enable. As for this E3 Mini DIP version, I think it's going to find its way into my Monoprice Mini Delta, along with some other pretty interesting mods. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.